you are experiencing problems with your computer system, some of the problem sol solutions could be to check the connectors and cables, make sure that your power cords and everything is connected properly, check the ports and the devices. You can also do a BIOS check by entering your BIOS when your system is booting up. When you turn your system off and on, enter, in the, bi enter the BIOS and check the configuration to make sure that you haven't had any problems with any changes that have been made. You can also check your software configuration because if your drivers aren't installed properly or if your drivers aren't compatible with the particular operating system it's a good idea to check the drivers and make sure that it's installed properly. After that you can check for your different conflicts as we talked about earlier with IRQs that we don't want uh, two components accessing the same IRQ at the same time. And then also if we're having some problems with our system we can check the seating of either the CPU or the memory and just make sure that it is seated properly. We do have um, sometimes the, the memory sticks, they, they, there's a memory creep where it slowly creeps out with I guess the heat and the expansion the cold and the heat makes the chip move and sometimes it creaks out of place so you can just check the memory make sure it's seated properly make sure the CPU is seated properly make sure your video card is inserted properly into the slot and make sure that your power supply is properly connected you're troubleshooting your system also a good idea to do is a is a virus check because uh, viruses sometimes affect your boot process and they can erase important files and important operating system files that you need in order to boot your system. With the CPU you've got to be careful of not letting it overheat and making sure that your CPU fan is functioning properly and that there's proper airflow throughout your system and occasionally it does need reseeding. There's also a form of um, a thermal creep which is overheating of the CPU. With memory sometimes we receive problems with parity errors that um, it's using the same address. It occasionally also needs to be reseeded and we just gotta make sure that when we are working on our computer system even if we just do open it up to just make sure that the components are reseated that we're careful with the electric static discharge the ESD and that we take precautions against that with IO ports we're able to do a loopback test in order to check if they're functioning properly with network cards you're able to work in your DOS operating system to ping a default address and see if the loopback is working properly. With hard drives we can just simply check the LED in the front of the system case. Sometimes we've got to check the jumpers. We've got to make sure that the master and slave jumpers are configured properly. Make sure that your cables are inserted properly also. And we can do um, a check for errors on the hard drive through the BIOS or through the file system itself. In cleaning your system for preventative maintenance make sure that you use approved cleaning fabrics that are lint free. Don't use any volatile substances especially on the plastics and for other cleaning products use compressed air and approved PC vacuums for vacuuming inside of your PC. Always remember to disconnect cables before cleaning and if you're cleaning your monitor case or keyboard you can clean the exterior make sure that the cables are still disconnected. Check your ventilation slots of your system case make sure that ventilation is functioning properly. Check your fans 
your hard disk check for errors with a scan disk. Make sure that you back up your hard disks constantly and that you defrag them as needed. And reseat components as necessary by checking the cables. Should ne make sure that you never use too much force or pressure on the sensitive components. As a hazard and for safety of power, prevent against surges with a proper power bar. Surges are a brief spike or an abrupt change in the electrical voltage. We've also got sags where it's a dip in the available volt voltage. We've got brownouts which is an extensive sag over a period. And we've got blackouts which are complete loss of power. Make sure that the components when you do place them away that it's in um, ESD packaging, electrostatic discharge packaging, that it's safe to place them in, that you're using an ESD strap for grounding, that your floor has con um, conductive mats and anti-static floors and carpets, and a humidifier and you're able to control the temperature in the room that you're working with. More of troubleshooting and diagnostic problems, finding problems. When your system boots up, you might have some messages that are being displayed on your screen. The first one is the CMOS battery failed, and this just means that the battery is no longer functional and that you should find a replacement battery to replace it. The next is the CMOS checksum error, and this means that the CMOS is, um, is incorrect and that it's possibly become corrupt, that the CMOS has become corrupt. This can be caused by having a weak battery, so once again you should check the battery, replace the battery. The next is the display switch is set incorrectly, and this is the display switch on the motherboard. It can either be set to color or to monochrome, and this indicates that the setting is improper. You can turn the system off or change the jumper setting, or enter into the setup and change the video selection. The next is floppy disks fail. And this just simply means that it can't initialize the floppy drive controller or the drive itself. And make sure that the floppy controller is installed correctly. If there's no floppy disks that are installed, then make sure that the disk drive selection in the startup is set to none or to auto. So you'd have to go into your BIOS and you'd have to reconfigure that. Next is um, hard disk initializing. Please wait a moment. Just sometimes on a system, depending on the system, a hard disk requires some extra time to initiate and this isn't really a serious problem. Next is hard disk install failure and this means that it cannot initialize the hard drive controller or the drive. Make sure that the drive is installed correctly if there are no hard drives installed, then make sure that the setup is set to none in the, in the BIOS once again. Next, we've got the hard disk's diagnosis fail. And this, um, on some systems, they run a specific uh, disk diagnostic routine. And this message appears if one or more hard disks return an error when the diagnostics run. Next one is a keyboard error. This is simply when there is no keyboard present. The next is the keyboard is locked out and this indicates that one or more keys have been pressed down on the keyboard tests. Uh, make sure that there's nothing resting on the keyboard itself. The next one is the memory test and it displays um, its, its full memory test counting down the memory areas being text tested. If um, there's a failure and post detects that there's a, um, a failure during the memory testing, there's some additional information that will appear. We've got uh, override enabled defaults loaded. And this is um, if the system cannot boot using the current CMOS configuration, the BIOS can override the configuration with a set of BIOS defaults designed for the most stable, minimal performance system operations. After that, we've got the, the press tab to show post screen. 
and what this is this is the post display of just different um, licenses and permits for the operator next one a primary master hard disk fail and this is um, when the post detects an error in the primary master IID hard drive and after that we've got a primary slave hard drive fail where dis um, the post detects an error a secondary master IID hard drive after that we've got um, resu resuming from disk press tab to show post screen this is just simply um, an offer for the for the manufacturer to have a save to disk feature mainly used on mo notebook computers we've got a secondary master hard disk fail where it detects an error with uh, um, the hard disk and we've also got a secondary slave hard disk fail where it detects an error with the ID hard disk there's just a few errors to watch out for and just some ways to solve the problems I'm going to briefly talk about error codes and what they mean we've got an error code of one uh, whatever it might be means that it's definitely a system board problem uh, one 61 is a CMOS battery failure, 164 is a memory size error, um, 2 blank blank could be a memory related problem, 3 blank blank could be a keyboard related problem, 4 blank blank could be a monochrome video problem, 5 is a color video problem, 600s would be the floppy disk problem and the 1700s are a hard disk problem. So depending on what your BIOS is, um, sometimes they do show up with these errors and it's a good idea to have an idea of what the errors will represent.